Mars buys another 200 European vet clinics. Pathway Petco partners with Heska Diagnostics. Fresh Pet tricks kids into eating dog food. And the AMA finds out that MDs are still overprescribing antibiotics and they take a stand on gun control. Welcome back to Off-Label Veterinary News, your source for commentary on animals, medicine, and practice life. If this is your first time or you haven't had the chance to subscribe yet, please do it now because that helps us get the news out to more of our veterinary colleagues. Let's jump in to some of the stories you might have missed. What's sweeter than M&Ms? Well, how about some M&A pet industry news? Yes, it's another week and Mars Pet Care announced two big acquisitions. Last week, you'll recall, they bought over 87 vet clinics in the UK as part of the acquisition of the Linnaeus Group. Well, this week they had to up the ante and they announced they were buying over 200 veterinary clinics in Northern Europe owned by Anacura. Mars purchased Anacura's 200 clinics for an undisclosed amount, but financial experts estimate the deal to be worth between one and two billion euros. If you're a veterinary professional today, pay close attention to this expansion, because are we quickly coming into that period of consolidation like other industries and professions where we have four or five major players controlling around 70% of the market. I think Mars continued expansion globally into pet care services signals that they want to be one of those four or five top players in the veterinary space. What do you think off labelers about this latest Mars acquisition? Pathway partners with Heska. Speaking of expansion, Pathway Vet Alliance announced this week that it was entering into a strategic partnership with the diagnostic company Heska. Now what that means is that all of the Pathway clinics, including those I'm assuming that will go into Petco, remember Pathway equals Petco, Petco equals Pathway. Pathway equals Petco, Petco equals Pathway, Pathway equals Petco, Petco equals Pathway, Pathway equals Petco, Petco equals Pathway. That those clinics will also be utilizing Heska's diagnostics. Now, I am a fan of this deal, and I'll tell you why. Because anything we can do to expand competition in the veterinary diagnostic space is a good thing for us all, veterinary providers as well as pet owners, because Realistically speaking, there are only two laboratory service providers in the United States. They are VCA Antec and IDEX. We need companies like Abaxis and Heska to compete so that they can help not only innovate in the space and provide better service to us veterinary professionals, but also to lower costs because as long as there are only two major lab companies in our space, they can pretty much charge whatever they want. What do you think about this latest news of Pathway partnering with Heska? Is it good for the profession or does it matter or who cares? I wanna hear from you. Fresh Pet tricks British children into eating dog food. Fresh Pet is at it again. You may recall back in 2015 when Fresh Pet, a human grade pet food in a tube type of company, served unsuspecting diners dog food. And they put out a video and did a commercial and all this stuff and hilarity ensued. And of course, a lot of people were confused, but a lot of us veterinary professionals were also concerned that this might signal to people it's okay to eat pet foods in general. Now, that's a whole nother can of worms, but they did it again. This time in jolly old England. They actually serve children this time and of course some adults as well. But they did the same thing. A chef pops in and says, I want you to try my new dishes and hilarity ensues. Now, as you can imagine, once again, animal advocates are up in arms saying, wait a second, you shouldn't eat your dog's food. You shouldn't eat what you feed your cat because the plain and simple truth is this. Animal feed is not human food. In fact, there's been tremendous controversy on the terms human grade pet foods. What does it mean? How is it processed and so forth? So if you're watching this today, I don't encourage you to open up a bag or can of pet food in the United States and just chow down, okay? Just saying there. So what do you think off labelers about marketing stunts like this? Do they help or hurt the profession? Do they potentially confuse consumers on what is actually in their pet food and how it's processed? Or do they actually help us by trying to associate human foods with pet foods? 
Will they, in some weird universe, help us raise the standards of pet foods? Because honestly, that's what I'm most interested in. I don't wanna do anything to potentially damage that. I am currently not happy with the general manufacturing processes of pet foods in the United States. We can do so much better, people. What do you think? Does this help or hurt? Or do you even care? I don't know. Maybe you just don't care. Maybe this kind of well, stuff is really just good. boring yeah. and, you know, we'll just so move on. And Medical doctors still overprescribing antibiotics. In the latest edition of the Journal of the American Medical Association, researchers evaluated whether or not physicians were appropriately prescribing antibiotics in acute respiratory infections. They evaluated the influenza seasons from 2013 to 2014 and 2014 and 2015. Of the nearly 15,000 patients presenting for acute respiratory infection, 41% were found to have been prescribed an antibiotic when it was absolutely, unequivocally not needed. In addition, 29% of patients with influenza confirmed through testing were prescribed antibiotics, and among patients prescribed antibiotics, 38% with pharyngitis tested negative for streptococcus and 38% with sinusitis had symptoms for three days or less before the visit, suggesting that antibiotics were not appropriate. Over the past five years, I have written articles, made videos, given lectures about appropriate antibiotic stewardship for our profession. And this is one of those research studies that shows we still have a long way to go. So off-labelers, I want you to think about how we prescribe antibiotics in acute respiratory infections. Are we over-prescribing? Now, we don't have all the amazing tests that are available for the human patients, but we do have our own resources. Are we doing enough as veterinarians to make sure we're appropriately prescribing antibiotics? I wanna hear from you. The American Medical Association makes a stand for gun control. In an overwhelming majority, the American Medical Association at its annual meeting voted to support stricter gun legislation. With a vote of 446 to 99, the AMA voted to back several new gun laws at its annual policy meeting. The AMA has more than 243,000 members and cited government data showing almost 40,000 deaths by gun in 2016, including suicides and nearly 111,000 gun injuries. In comparison, U.S. deaths from diabetes in 2016 were about 80,000, Alzheimer's 111,000, and lung disease 155,000. Physicians pointed out that they were on the front lines of gun violence and felt now was the time to take a stand. I'm often critical of organized medicine, including veterinary medicine, for their slow reaction times and inability to wade into important social issues. I applaud the AMA for taking a stand on a controversial topic in the name of human safety. What do you think, off-labelers? Are there topics that the American Veterinary Medical Association should be weighing in on that you feel they're ignoring? I wanna hear from you. Well, that's it for another edition of Off-Label Veterinary News. If you like content like this, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and share it with your friends. And hit that notification bell on YouTube. That way you'll find out as soon as we drop content like this on your internet doorstep. Until next time, keep living that Off-Label life. Bye.